Hello again, it's the lock noob. I think the last couple of videos I've been talking about wafer locks. Wafer locks are something which I quite like to pick because they're relatively easy to pick, despite the fact that there's a lot of wafer locks that are put in places which you would expect would give you slightly higher security. Things like car doors, car ignitions, um, electronic safety boxes, that kind of thing. You also find them on stuff which you'd expect to have kind of low security, things like filing cabinets. So this is what I want to uh, look at today. This is new, it's from eBay. It's a replacement car ignition switch. Um, could be car, a boat, whatever you like really I suppose. Uh, they all work the same way. Uh, one interesting thing about this as a way for lock is that if you look down the barrel of the lock there, you can see uh, the wafer stack, or you can see the first couple of wafers in there, and you can see that they're all at the top. So, using a double sided uh, wafer lock pick probably wouldn't do you any favours, wouldn't hurt necessarily, but um, it isn't trying to act on uh, wafers being pushed up and down at the same time. All we care about is them being pushed up in this lock. Uh, like lots of car locks, they are sprung, and this actually gives it a little bit of um, difficulty in some ways, especially when you're trying to tension the thing. I'm just going to try and shove this in the vise. Nice and tight. It's important to get these tight because if they're not actually attached to a car still, and please, um, you know, only try to pick locks which are yours and the ones that aren't in use, especially wafer locks, so they're, they're quite fragile, it's like hammering around with them, you know, you're bound to uh, snap or break a wafer in there, then you've got to call out somebody to come and fix your car and replace all your locks and it's going to cost lots and lots and lots of money and you wish you hadn't. So this is why I personally like to practice on stuff I bought off eBay or Amazon. Um, interesting thing about these ignition locks, of course, they don't just have one position. They usually have uh, one, two or three different positions. If you don't have the key in there, you will need to pick it each time you want to turn to the next position. So I think in this lock it's about twice. Because of the spring tension on it, I need something quite thick. You can see this is quite um, a thick stainless steel uh, wire one. It's a commercial one. Uh, I've used it before in some of my videos. Uh, but this, this is strong enough that I can actually put some torque on the lock as I as I try to pick it, and uh, it you know the the wrench itself won't bend. So I'm going to have a go trying to pick this. Now, just because the wafers themselves only need to be pushed up to their uh, to their open position, it doesn't mean that you can just ram this all the way down, because you might actually stop one of those wafer gates moving up in the lock. So. Just make sure that you only put it in as far as you need to and try and get the right side so we have a little bit of there we go so that should that should do for me okay just try, trying to put tension on with this finger um quite heavy tension but but not so bad either and just go in with um just so to show you that rate it's a basically a hollowed out half diamond would you say it's got a bit more rounded on top this is from a, a Goso kit. It's finished really badly, as you can see there. Uh, I should probably go around with some sandpaper and round that off, but yeah, I'm just too lazy at the moment. So here we go. So pop that in. And I'm just going to rake those wafers gently. Ah, there we go. So the first thing is you'll see it's gone to the first position. I can put a heavier tension on this, and it won't move around any further. It just won't. It's locked. If you have the key in there, of course, the wafers will be kept at the right height and you'll be able to turn it to the next position. So imagine that this position is turning on the electrics, that kind of thing, and then the next position would hopefully be the one where you can start to um, put the ignition on the engine. So I'll go with this. I can feel it, one of those things binding there. Let's see if I can... It's hard to get the tension right on this because um, it needs quite heavy tension to get over the, the springs but you also don't want to put so heavy tension on you you can't 
Ah, there we go. Now, this is at position, I'd say, 2. If you continue talking it, there we go, it'll actually turn round, uh, just like any uh, car does when you're trying to turn the ignition. And you see, if I let go, and probably the wrench will fall out, but just by way of example, there you go. Oh, it didn't fall out, but you can see how, how strong that spring is. It really snaps in there. So I guess my tip is, you're going to be trying to pick ignition locks. Um, the hardest bit is trying to balance that tension. If you put too much torque on with the tension wrench, you'll end up binding all of the wafers and you'll end up kind of have to hammer the poor things up into position instead of just gently raking them. Um, if you don't put enough on, then of course nothing will actually stay uh, picked and all you'll be doing is uh, you'll be keeping tension on the, the spring in the core itself, which isn't very helpful either. And to turn it back, all you need to do is of course just apply a bit of torque in the opposite direction and it should click back into place. There we go. Thank you very much. That was uh, me picking open a car ignition. I'll see you next time.